Hey guys, Guy in a Wheelchair here, and you know what time it is. It's time for Deception of Religion Part 6. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me out. Today, we're responding to a video posted by YouTube user Wretched entitled, How Can Parents Keep Their Children From Becoming False Converts? Converts in this context, I believe, means going through the motions of Christianity, but not actually living the lifestyle. Let's get into it. From Emily Power Tucker, what advice would you give to a parent in regards to ensuring our kids do not become false converts? How do they truly repent and when should they? If I may, I'll translate the letter. How do we keep our children from digressing through the Christian brainwashing process that we put them through? How do we keep them from thinking for themselves and coming to their own conclusion and when is it too early to start making them feel bad for being human let's do the last one for when should they when God grants them repentance and faith that's when they should okay so the first question he responds to is her question when should my children start repenting for sin and his answer is when Jesus grants them repentance through faith so until Jesus grants them repentance through faith, your child is just going to be a dirty little sinner and God forbid something happens to your child before Jesus grants them repentance through faith and they die. Sorry, but I guess little Billy's just going to have to burn in hell. At what age? Historically, we've always considered puberty so that a child can understand what it is that they are turning their back on in totality. However, what about the, what do you, how does a parent ensure that our kids don't become false converts? Let me give you something that should not cause you to go, oh, whew, I don't need to do anything, but should perhaps give you some comfort. Mom and dad, you can't do anything to ensure that your child doesn't become a false convert. That, that is between your child and God. Okay. I'm sorry, but I can't help but laugh. At this point, this guy kind of reminds me of like a Christian apologist version of Dr. Phil. I just find that funny. <laughs> go ahead, Doc. All you can do is be faithful. So how do you do that? I hear a lot of presentations these days about how to do family worship. Thumbs up if that's what you want to do. This is the day when we all gather around and dad reads from the Bible and preaches or talks. We sing hymns, what have you. That's all very good and you can choose to do that if you would like to. Did anybody else notice how he said that? That was a very Old Testament thing to say. Like, this is the day when we all gather around and dad reads the Bible and mom doesn't say anything unless she's spoken to. Whatever form you like for as long as you like. We did it as a family for many, many years. Once they started running around college, etc., it kind of falls apart. But here's something that I think that you can and should automatically be doing that really helps a child understand that Christianity is real and it works. Might I encourage you, mom and dad, to not merely be doing a set aside Bible time, Bible study, bi your daily devotional time, and then you feel really bad or the kids are squiggling and it didn't seem to work. Make sure that your conversation is sprinkled with Jesus. Hey y'all, today we're going to make God in wheelchair special Christianity cookies. Start with some flour, egg, and water, mix it all together in a bowl, sprinkle some Jesus on top, throw it in the oven, and cook till golden brown, and there you go. You got a cookie worthy of a savior. Y'all make sure you tune in next week when we make my world famous resurrection rice cakes. Make sure that when you make family decisions that they hear the theology being applied. Make sure your kids know before they make a really tough decision they should always consult with an imaginary friend. Make sure that when there's conflict in the home the gospel is brought in. Yeah, cause there's no family conflict a good crucifixion can solve. It's no wonder why your kids lost their faith when they went off to college. Dad, Mom, when you sin, repent to your child. Ask for their forgiveness. When a parent sins, they should ask for their child's forgiveness? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Not to mention, you're going to confuse the hell out of your child. Hey, Billy, today, Daddy cheated on Mommy. But you'll forgive me, won't you, sport? Do your children ever catch you reading the Bible? Do your children ever catch you reading the Bible? 
What is it, some kind of activity we do in secret now? Like, forget the whole family fellowship dad reading the Bible stuff a few minutes ago. Hey, I think the kids are up. Hurry, put it away. Hurry, they're gonna hear you. Have your children ever walked into a room? Hey, has anybody said, duh, dad's on his knees or on his face. What's, what's that all about? How stupid do Christians think children are? Like somebody's just gonna walk in a room and go, Oh, daddy's got his face on the floor. I should grow up to be a Christian. If your children never see that, you can look forward to them being a statistic. Somewhere between 60 and 80% of kids who run off to university who have made some sort of profession of faith backslide. Okay, so this seems like an incredibly stupid source of parenting advice, even for a Christian. This guy's advice was, make sure Jesus is sprinkled in your conversation like he was a seasoning. Make sure that your kids don't use rational thinking and logic when making life decisions. Make sure you use the Bible to solve family conflicts and bury your face in the floor. That's the secret formula for making sure your child doesn't lose their faith. This guy is retarded. Any parent that would follow this guy's advice is wrong.